Hey gang, how about a riddle? What has two thumbs and a professional and personal life so grindingly one damn thing after another stressful that he's doing another episode in list form? This guy! Yes, it's time once again to dig into the piles of stuff that might not make for a full show, but can maybe add up to one if you cram enough of them together. Let's see what's been cropping up lately. I'm gonna wreck it! I don't want to be the bad guy anymore. So, like everyone else, I've probably watched the trailer for Wreck-It Ralph a few dozen times by now. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. You can just tell. Here's my question, though. Of all the stuff in this trailer, why does this part seem to be bothering people so much? I'm Zangief, I'm bad guy. Oh, Bye, Zangief. Zangief. Ralph, you are bad guy. But this does not mean you're bad guy. Guy. Okay, yeah, I never really thought of Zangief as a villain in Street Fighter, the same way I think of Bison, Vega, Balrog, and Sagat, but I also never really thought of him as a good guy. I'll admit I've kind of given up trying to understand how the Street Fighter canon is supposed to work, but isn't Zangief just one of those guys who's in the tournament for not a particularly good or evil reason, he's just there to fight? So maybe he's not evil, but he's not like a good guy hero either. Plus, he was the Soviet Union rep and the game was made during the Cold War, so yeah, either Wait, who cares? Zangief, Bowser, Bison, the Beholder, Dr. Robotnik, and that purple rhino from Altered Beast are all characters in a Disney movie. That's awesome. Can we stop nitpicking for one bloody second? Speaking of video games, let's talk about this for a minute. This year, Nintendo is releasing two Mario side-scrollers. As someone who can never get enough 2D platformers, this makes me very happy. But it also leads some people to raise the specter of cognitive dissonance about people like, well, like me, frequently chastising modern game franchises like Call of Duty or Madden, or really any of the EA Sports titles, for lack of game-to-game -game innovation, and then doing cartwheels over retro revivals like this. On the one hand, in theory, it's a valid question to raise in the the broader sense of gaming criticism and journalism grappling with the monetization of nostalgia as Generation Ness enters its 30s and 40s. On the other hand, yeah, even apart from personal preference, I see a distinct difference between a franchise that has spent two decades in a state of near-constant innovation and change, moving between different genres, playstyles, mediums, polishing some, inventing others, that decides after 25 years to start also doing a series of revival entries for kicks and a series that has innovated precisely once in nine years. Or a series whose last innovation of any kind was, hey, what if they're in 3D from now on? I mean, this is kind of like getting mad at the surviving members of the Beatles for mostly playing greatest hits at their concerts. When you record Help, Rubber Soul, Revolver, Sgt. Pepper's, The White Album in the course of only five years, you can rest on your laurels too. So, Quentin Tarantino's big holiday movie this year is about an ex-slave hunting down and killing his former plantation masters in the pre-Civil War South. Kill white folks and they pay you for it? What's not to like? I like the way you die, boy. Yeah, that won't be controversial at all. Here's a quick object lesson in visual storytelling. You see this scene from the Brave trailer where the princess here literally bursts the seams of her royal dress in order to draw and fire an arrow to show up the failings of the guys who've been having target practice to win her hand as a dual visual metaphor for her true self being released from confinement within the restrictive gender roles of pre-enlightened patriarchy and of her physical ill-suitedness to the superficial trappings of traditional femininity? I'll be shooting for my own hand! Curse this dress! Don't you dare loose another arrow! Yeah, this is why Pixar is Pixar, and everyone else is everyone else. Still waiting around for Warner Brothers to get its act together with all those DC superheroes they own but can't seem to make good movies out of? Me too. Until then, let's all look forward to the new Green Arrow TV show, which is now just called Arrow, and looks terrible. But look at what seems to show up right near the end of the preview. So, yeah, it's got that going for it, I guess. Speaking of which, you know, it almost feels sacrilegious to say this, but is it possible that maybe, just maybe, we've finally reached the point where there's been enough Batman for a while? Alright, that's all I've got this week. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm Bob, and that's The Big Picture.